Hola, hola, first graders and artists. Maestra Peterson here again. Today we're gonna do another art lesson together. And for the lesson that I have today, we're going to be looking at sculptures. If you don't know what a sculpture is, a sculpture is a piece of art that is in 3D. It has three dimensions. What does three dimensions mean? It means you can touch it. It's solid. Uh, until now, we've been looking at paintings. Those are 2D art. Uh, they're just flat. You can really hold whatever it's in the painting, right? It's just a flat piece of art. We cannot hold it. We can only look at it. But today we're going to be looking at sculptures and how they are 3D, okay? So to get started, let's talk more about what 3D is like. And I'm going to share here with you Adios, uh, uh, this little presentation that I prepared uh, for this lesson. So let me move myself. So here we have the painting of an orange, right? Somebody painted on a flat surface an orange. That is 2D art. We cannot hold the orange, we can only look at it. Okay, and this is a real orange. So this is 3D, it's not really art, but it's 3D. I can hold it, it's solid, okay? I can touch the back, I can touch the front, I can touch the top, and I can touch the bottom. This is 3D, and the painting on, the, on your screen is 2D. We can actually hold the orange. We cannot touch the sides or the top or the bottom. We can only see the front of the painting, even though it's a really good painting and it looks like we can see more around of the orange. So 2D art is usually paintings and drawings, and we cannot pick it up what's in the painting. Okay, let me give you here another example of sculptures and paintings. Here on the left, we have 2D art, a painting of flowers, of sunflowers on canvas and it's hanging on the wall. We cannot hold the flowers, we cannot touch the flowers, unfortunately. And on the right hand side, you have a picture of a sculpture at a museum. That's a very famous sculpture. It looks like a dog made of balloons, but it's really big. And you see here the people in the museum, they can actually walk around it. They can see all the sides of it. This is a 3D, this is 3D art sculptures. They can see the top, they can see the bottom, they can see all the sides, they can even walk around it. That's what a sculpture will look like. And here on our next page, we have more sculptures, more 3D art. Let me show you. This over here is a very abstract sculpture. It's made of metal. Uh, down here, we have another sculpture made of stone. This one, if you look close, you know what this is. This is a sculpture made out of Legos. How impressive is this? Up here, we have a sculpture made out of sand. Instead of building a sand castle, this artist built Shrek and Donkey and the Puss in Boots, Boots a character from the movie out of sand. Up here, we have more sculptures. They're spheres. They look like balls. Down here, another sculpture, a cube. A huge cube is not a square. A square would be flat. A cube has shapes all around, right? So it's 3D. Down here is another sculpture. This is an alligator uh, made out of cement and little pieces of tile. Actually, I've seen this sculpture in person and kids can climb on it. It's really fun. Another sculpture down here made out of metal and another little sculpture down here, a dragon made of bronze. So these are 3D sculptures. You can touch it and you can see it all around it. They're not flat. For the lesson today, I chose a very famous American sculptor. A sculptor is a person who makes, sculpt makes sculptures. Her name is Deborah Butterfield and you actually probably already seen her art here in Portland. 
So let me go to the next picture. So this is her here. And she makes sculptures out of driftwood. Driftwood is trees that have fallen and end up in the sea and they float and then they come back. And then she puts it together to create the sculptures. So what do you see here? They are horses. Deborah Butterfield is very famous for making sculptures of horses. Look how big they are too. This is her right here. And these are her horses. Very impressive, right? Okay, so now we go back to our lesson and we're going to do just pretty much the same way we've been doing so far. We're going to describe it. Vamos a describir el arte que vemos. Luego vamos a decir cómo nos sentimos. You're going to say, share with somebody how you feel when you look at this art and why. Y finalmente, we're going to recreate it. Vamos a recrear el arte, okay? This is going to be a little trickier because sculptures, um, this is the first time we're going to do sculptures together. So let me go to the next page. And here is this horse. It's, if, you ever, if you've ever been to um, the airport in Portland, you probably have seen this horse before. This horse is outside on the way to the airport in Portland, just on the grass. I think there are four or five horses. Uh, this is one of the horses that's out there, made out of driftwood by Deborah Butterfield. So we can see this art for free if we're ever driving by the airport. How cool is that? So here's what we're going to do. First, you're going to describe it. Vamos a describir que vemos. I already helped you out. I told you it's a horse. That's what I think it is. I think it's a horse. So pause the video and tell somebody that's next to you what you see. Give as much detail as you can. Muchos detalles. After you described it, now you're going to tell somebody how you feel when you look at this. ¿Cómo te sientes cuando mira el caballo de Deborah Butterfield? Hmm. It's a good time to pause the video. After you shared with somebody how you feel when you look at this, now it's time to recreate it. How are we going to recreate sculptures, Maestro Peterson? Can I use pencils and paint? You could. Here's what I'm going to show you what I'm going to use. We're actually going to start this art together. For this art, because she makes it out of driftwood, pieces of wood, I actually collected sticks outside. I went on a stick hunt. I collected some sticks outside and I brought it inside. I'm also going to use plastilina play-doh. This is kind of old and hard. I think it might be good. And some tape. That's all I have. Sticks that I found outside. Some play-doh. If you don't have play-doh, you can use um, thread or tape or um, let's see what else you could use. Um, other sticks, okay, and tape. And I also just found a piece of cardboard that I'm going to put my horse on, okay? So here's how I would start. I'll use Play-Doh to kind of hold the legs of the horse, I think, because I needed to make it stand up, right? So how about this? Does this look good? Okay, horses have how many legs? Four, so I would need four bases for my legs, for my horse's leg. Okay, and then four, another leg. It kind of needs to be the same size. It's kind of the same size. Yes, so I'm gonna use it. And another same size. Good, same size. They need to be the same size in order to hold the horse's body. But I don't know what that's gonna look like. Let's see. Is this the same size? No, this is too big. So I'm going to cut it. Oh no. I need a new stick. I'm going to cut this one in half. And I think it will be 
just about the right size. This one might be a little tricky, you might need help, but that's okay. There we go. And then I'm going to use some tape, some tape to, maybe I'm gonna stick these two guys together to make it sturdier. I'm gonna use some tape here. Now I'm gonna make, start making the body. So maybe I'll put more tape right here. I can use even maybe more Play-Doh. Okay, well, this looks like a job that I'm gonna need more time to work on. But remember, there are no wrongs when we're creating art or when you're making art your own. You can use anything you'd like to make the sculpture. You can use Legos, you can use Play-Doh, you can use sticks. Um, you can actually make it flat and put all the sticks on a piece of paper and glue them, right? Uh, ustedes pueden usar que quieren. Uh, pueden usar bloques de Legos o pueden usar plastilina o palitos así que encuentran afuera. Y también pueden uh, pegarlos en papel y uh, recrear tu arte, okay? Uh, when you're done recreating the art of Deborah Butterfield's The Driftwood Horses, you can take a picture and send it to your teacher so we can look at your wonderful art.